uh, well, draft law amendments uh, published in August by uh, Treasury um, targeting foreign employers has inadvertently led to an uproar among South Africans um, who are working remotely, who fear the law change may disincentivize foreign employers from retaining the services of South African talent. Once passed into law, foreign employers with South African-based employees will be required to register uh, with SARS for payroll taxes and become accountable for pay-as-you-earn, UIF and skills development levies. Uh, Bronwyn Human is a uh, tax attorney with Tax Consulting South Africa. Uh, joins me on the line now. Bronwyn, a very good morning and welcome to the show. Hi, Africa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm not a tax um, specialist in any way, but it makes sense that Africa, Melane, employed in Cape Town, providing services to an American-based company or a European-based company that I not only pay taxes in the U.S., but, you know, SARS should get a cut of it because ultimately um, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm earning while living here. Why should I not be uh, subject to that tax? Yes, absolutely. That's definitely uh, one of the driving forces behind this uh, proposed amendment. Uh, SARS wants to make sure that they collect the correct amount of taxes, always. So this new proposed change to the law, where foreign employers would also need to withhold pay-as-you-earn, is to align uh, foreign employers' obligations with that of local employers to make sure that the employees working in South Africa benefiting from our lovely weather and all we have to offer uh, also uh, pay the taxes due to SARS. Uh, Why, if I'm looking to employ the services of a South African, happy to have them working in Cape Town or Joburg while obviously I get the benefit of their skill set in America, why would I be opposed to the idea of registering for payers and UIF and skills development levies? Is that is that too cumbersome a process? Is it very involved for a foreign-based company to register for such uh, in South Africa? It is quite an administratively burdened some process, mostly because you will have to register a branch with the Companies and Intellectual Properties Commission before you'll be uh, provided with a tax number in order to withhold this pay-as-you-earn. So that is quite an administratively burdensome process. It's quite costly as well, whereas now foreign employers simply pay a lump sum salary to their remote workers each month. They will now have to pay the extra costs involved in registering with the SIPC, in withholding payee, in withholding UIF and SDL. And furthermore, um, they're not quite sure what the UIF and SDL contributions are for at this point. If, for instance, an employee is only here for three months or two weeks or whatever the period may be, they might never claim UIF or SDL. And so it's it's difficult to see at this point why this change is made without uh, much clarity given on this on this limit of when when tax will become liable for for uh, for foreign employers, uh, even when employees are here for like less than a month, exactly or a week, yeah, and. Is there wiggle room, if you like, in tax law and other um, legal frameworks in South Africa that might uh, result in SARS coming up with a vehicle um, that is um, sensitive to whatever that sweet spot is going to be, right? Where ultimately there is a registration, in inverted commas, of an entity in South Africa for that foreign-based employer, but without having to go through the rigmarole and the, as you say, excessive cost of establishing an entire branch in inverted commas, in order for uh, the uh, relevant um, administration to take place as far as tax, UIF and uh, and skills levy is concerned? At, at this moment, there is no such vehicle. So that is something that will have to be analysed, researched properly to make sure that it is viable to establish a, a different process entirely for foreign employers. But at, at the moment, there's there's no vehicle that will differentiate between foreign and local employers. They will be treated the same should this proposed change become law. But it is encouraging, is it not, that SARS is then open to engage with remote workers and tax advisors on this issue, right? Very much so. The workshops that they held with um, 
tax commentators uh, definitely shows that Treasury and SARS are in good faith trying to implement this new uh, proposed change, trying to make sure that they, they get it right um, because they don't, they don't want to, um, excuse me, they don't want to alienate these foreign employers. I mean, we already have dwindling unemployment rates, so it's, it's important that we keep, we keep the skills, we keep the uh, interest in, in employing South African employees. All right. What happens next, Bronwyn? Um, there, there was obviously robust engagement by all accounts. Um, what does SARS do next? So uh, the proposed amendments were published in July of this year with a period of public comment, which subsequently closed. Um, many parties submitted their comments relating to this proposed change. So we are now uh, just waiting and seeing uh, what what those comments, what the effect of those comments will be. Um, and we expect that this uh, amended legislation will be published in January or February next year. So at the moment, it's, it's a, a game of wait and see. All right, we'll certainly be talking to you again at that point, Bronwyn. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Bronwyn Human is a tax attorney with Tax Consulting SA, reflecting on SARS being open to engage with remote workers and tax advisors following the backlash, really, uh, to the requirement that um, uh, foreign employers register with South Africa for payers who earn UIF at skills development levies.